so is that because there's not much inventory, not much local inventory. Most of our traffic, Indonesia internet traffic, come from Facebook, social network site, come from YouTube. All the international portal services, not the local services. And it's subject to this international player to, to say we allow it or we don't allow it. When you allow it also, it's not really, call it, uh, uh, what do you call it, very relevant yeah, for Indonesia. Yeah, so say, oh, we run overseas, Indonesia is also fine. Yeah, but there's no support system like Google only have their office like a few weeks ago. Yeah, so to grow that and we have to be working with somebody in Singapore and also very troublesome. Yeah, Indonesia traffic mostly mobile. Facebook mobile advertising is just open. Yeah, a few weeks ago as well. So it's Monday. But the rest is, uh, of our inventory are news portal. But how many people read news? Not much. Right? How many people subscribe to newspaper in Indonesia? Also not much. Yeah, so it was like what entertainment, fun stuff, yeah, sharing things, chatting, all these services. So we don't have enough of that inventory. Yeah, so with, with user generated content, also a social network, also brand is a bit reluctant because they don't know what they're talking about. If I advertise, put my, my banner there, then somebody talk bad about my product, then it looks bad. So it's a bit, they are also afraid to, to try. But I believe the number will go up. Yeah, but when it go up, somebody will be there. Is it related to that? Yeah, just let me add something. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm an investor in a company, I mentioned Andy, it's called Effective Measure. And basically what they, they're doing in Southeast Asia and Indonesia in particular is they're trying to help that problem because a lot of the big multinational advertisers are headquartered in Singapore, and they're wanting to, they're being told by their headquarters, whether it's in the US or in the UK, that they want to see more and more of their money get spent in, you know, in digital. But then they go, well, we don't believe the publishers. We just don't believe the numbers that the publishers tell us. So, so because they're, they're not verifiable. Yeah. And so what this company that I'm involved with is what they're doing is they're getting now most of the top publishers and all the major Southeast Asian and Middle Eastern and African, you know, the emerging markets to go in and find <coughs> their sites. So then they start getting a verified third party measuring. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be helping a lot getting the, the big the big brand advertisers, you know, the Coca-Colas, the city the, the and the local, you know, telcos and banks and things to go, okay, this may be worthwhile. So we're hoping, I think this is going to be pretty exciting over the next, you know, year or two that it could actually change quite a bit and it could bring a lot more money into the digital side in all the, all the countries in Southeast Asia in particular and Indonesia. Awesome. Uh, and the okay. next question? Okay, so um, found Actually, uh, we are uh, we have a partnership with Venus University and uh, ITB University in Bandung, and the, the the purpose is of course to search the good talent, and we can uh, find a lot of uh, very good talent, uh, especially for programming, and we can say that uh, you know uh, there is you know, very you know uh, roughly we can divide two types, I think. Uh, in terms of the uh, good talent pool. Uh, one is uh, those kind of uh, very freshmen, you know, uh, like, you know, Facebook and Google. They found that in most of the, you know, a lot of the uh, good talent started their own, own business in campus. Right? So uh, that's the best one. That's, that's the one of the best way to start. And the second time good pool is, of course, the, the, like you guys, uh, working for some tech company and after that they uh, resign their company and they start their own company or they join their friends startups. That kind of talent pool is very good. But point is in Indonesia the second one is very rare. right? So uh, in case of Japan, uh, Japan uh, internet started is as e e e mo uh, mostly same as US uh, internet uh, started in 1994. I remember because I, in 1994 I, uh, you know, I started my job in Jafco, so I clearly remember. Uh, in 1994, Yahoo Japan started, and Netscape started, and everything started. Being means internet has started, and uh, so many startups happened and grew very, you know, 
uh, rapidly, but so many uh, crops. And the, uh, it took about 10 years to be big enough, like Yahoo Japan or GUI or DNA, those kind of giant, IT giant uh, grow enough. It took 10 years. So I don't think uh, Indonesian startups take 10 years. Maybe it's shorter because, you know, uh, you know world is changing. So he, you know, at that time, we didn't have the internet. But you know, Indonesia, uh, you, we, we already have internet. We already have a 3G mobile. So I don't think it takes 10 years. But I don't think it's going to be like one year, two years. Maybe, I don't know, three years to seven years, I don't know. But in, Either way, to produce the talent, uh, the, the, the company has to grow up, uh, some of the company. And, uh, you know, IPO is, of course, it's very important. IP, the, you know, public comp uh, private company is basically don't have uh, uh, motivation to acquire the companies, right? So it means uh, acquisition exit is very, very rare in that country. That's the one of the uh, biggest issue in South Asian country, including Japan. But Japan, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, IPO company. So that's why sometimes M&A acquisition is happening. So, you know, that makes the young guys to, uh, okay, so I can be a billionaire in a very short period, like US. So that's why uh, a lot of good talent will be birthed. But in Indonesia, it, it, it's still slow. But young guys, it's easy to try because they, they are nothing to lose. <laughs> but you know, for you guys, uh, sometimes you know, some guys you have a you know, wife or kids or mortgage loan, I don't know. So uh, yeah, so important thing is that, you know, uh, M&A exit is important and IPO is important and you know, uh, so tech companies' ecosystem is important to produce good companies. I, I think it would be interesting to actually you know, look at the numbers in terms of how many, how many graduates uh, from IT, from yeah. all these IT groups. I cannot say precise numbers. Right? Like uh, I, I can say precise numbers, but at least I think a thousand, I think. It's very difficult to find statistics in Indonesia. It's okay, anything more. Next time, we have to invite the education people to come in. Maybe. Let's have other people. I do remember my third question. Let's have other people ask us, and then we can come back to you again. Go ahead. Do you have any advice for people who are starting their startup, say remotely from here and Doing something in Indo. Yeah. Uh, for for uh, one thing that I found it difficult in Indo to find ISP that is reliable. Mm -hmm. For example, here we have plenty like Rackspace, mm -hmm. uh, AWS. Mm -hmm. We have AWS in Singapore, mm -hmm. but yeah. I think the bandwidth is too expensive. Yeah, in, in, in Jakarta right now, actually, uh, one of the founder at the founder institute. Um, they started like the first, uh, third, uh, fourth year data center in Indonesia. So I mean, this is only the first one. But the ISP now is getting better because like we have like uh, wall right and stuff like that. They are first year like ISP operating in Indonesia too. And if you are targeting Indonesian market, it's very cheap because bandwidth is free. So whether you wanna, yeah, whether you wanna <laughs> upload video, download video, anything, there is no bandwidth at all. I mean, it's like there is no bandwidth charge or something. It's not like in the US, as excellent. Only if you target a local market. But once you have uh, international uh, users or something like that, they will start charging you the bandwidth. But only if only users, in, uh, local users, that's not a problem. So I don't think infrastructure for ISP stuff is a big problem again right now. And also like Amazon Web Services also entering the Indonesian market as well, but they are a little bit expensive. But if you just target local market, I don't think ISP is going to be a problem right now. Yeah. I found it the entry, uh, the barrier of entry is quite high because for, mm -hmm. for, for entering in the market with say the scalability issue that you brought up mm -hmm. if uh, right now in the US you can just spin off instances as many as you want like for example Instagram mm -hmm. the, the, the user show up to like 500 mm -hmm. we, just we do have cloud computing already okay. with cloud surf for already telecom just launched and there are a couple other company also launched cloud uh, services already and virtual server, like virtual private server, is already there as well. So, I don't but think I guess they're not stable. 
some of them like well, I don't know whether you heard wall rack or like master web on the other side of the way. So maybe you can take a look. But they have a uh, pretty good infrastructure mm -hmm. and they have a totally good solution. If I can add on, I think that mm -hmm. uh, everybody have to work on their own part. Yeah, we heard say that uh, so there should be a problem everywhere. In US like ten years ago, there was a problem. You can say now I want to do something on mobile here. There's a problem and the internet can be very slow mm -hmm. here as well if you use your mobile phone. So everywhere you have different problems. Mm -hmm. So but instead of saying look at the problem then we have to say so what? Yeah, so what? Uh, we're gonna solve this issue. <laughs> Someone else I believe that if you make enough service and you need good bandwidth, someone will work it out. Yeah, let's say there's an issue with, with bureaucracy. Someone will work it up because it's also open, open opportunity for the other party. Yeah, but if nobody start, then nothing will happen. Yeah, so for engineer, start making good program. For business, people, start coming with good ideas. Yeah, then the, the the ISP will start making product to, to satisfy that idea. But it's made up. Who will start first? I think we are all are engineer here. Let's start. Yeah, if not us, who else? Right. No questions. Question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, you know, of course, we, we do things for fun, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, even though money is not, uh, everything is the only thing, I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> 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 so, what kind of exit strategy do we have, and how much money can we make, you know, in, in this micro-related uh, transactions, for example? Okay, you how it's a lot, yeah. the microtransaction, you know, it, 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 it's... The, the, the thing we're selling is about 10 cents a piece. You know, we're talking about like a penny per transaction. So we're talking about a certain kind of revenue model. Um, and what kind of exit plan can we have? Digital prime means either being bought out or if, if there is a plan to either IPO somewhere, uh -huh. including US. <coughs> yeah. Of course, it depends uh, what is it that the founders looking for. So, so many uh, startups, founders in sick you know, uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, they, their purpose is clearly uh, M&A acquisition, right? So uh, I think it's okay, but right now, as I told you, it's very, very difficult and rare. So uh, uh, my recommend, I don't recommend uh, M&A acquisition, acquisition exit. Uh, it's very small chance so far. So, and uh, I prefer uh, the, you know, uh, very serious entrepreneur type. It means you know keep going and their own business and to make change the world different mm -hmm. and or the to innovate something or the change people's life better. So those kind of types. So uh, so that we can you know uh, so it means uh, we are expected as a uh, in investor. Uh, we need the holding power to help them, not for the uh, you know one year exit or three year exit, maybe uh, five to seven years. That's why we, our fund, uh, it's set, uh, our you know, fund term is very, uh, set with very long compared with the Japanese fund because I see that it takes a lot, a lot of time. But it's okay because, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, I cannot say who, but someone is going to take this market. So, yeah. And also, even though, like we said, that payment infrastructure is not really good right now, but it doesn't mean that we don't have any opportunity to make money from our startups. Like, for example, right, uh, like in Indonesia, I, I don't know, like here, like when I was in uh, school, right here, when you, whenever you like looking for a job, you go to your school website, you post, I mean, like find a job posting right there, you submit your resume or something like that, right? So in every school or university college here, they have their own like, online job posting, right? In Indonesia, only one school has online job posting so far. <laughs>